Welcome to another video of the machine learning from scratch course presented by Assembly AI. In this series we implement popular machine learning algorithms using only built-in Python functions and NumPy. In this lesson we learn about the perceptron algorithm. So we start with a short theory section and then we jump to the code. So let's get started. So the perceptron is an algorithm for supervised learning of binary classifiers. It can be seen as a single unit of an artificial neural network and is also known as the prototype for neural nets. So if you use only a single unit, then we say this is a single layer perceptron and this can learn only linearly separable patterns. On the other hand, if you use a multi-layer perceptron, then it can learn more complex patterns. But in this lesson, we focus on the single layer perceptron. And this is inspired by neurons, so it's a simplified model of a biological neuron and it simulates the behavior of one cell. So let's say here we have our neuron and then it gets an input signal and then the signal travels along the way and if it reaches a certain threshold then this cell will activate. So we sell, say that the cell fires and then it gives an output signal. So if we transfer this to our mathematical representation, then we say it's a single layer neural network with the unit step function as activation function. So we have the inputs and then we multiply this with some weights. Then we sum this up and then we have the activation function and then we have the output. And in this case, the activation function is either one if the cell fires or zero if it doesn't fire. And in our case, one is the class label one and zero is the class label zero. So now let's put this into a mathematical model. So here we have the inputs times the weights. So we have a simple linear model. We approximate f of x with w times x plus a bias b. So these are the weights times x plus the bias b. And then we also want the activation function. And in this case, this is the unit step function, which is very simple. So this is one if the input reaches a certain threshold and zero otherwise. And this is the whole concept. So with this, we approximate the class label with the linear model w times x plus b and then apply the activation function, the unit step function. And now we need to learn the weights w and the bias b. And we do this with the perceptron update rule. And this is a super cool intuitive rule. I will show you what I mean in a moment. So for each training sample xi, we say we update the weights. We say the weights plus delta w. And for the bias, the same, the bias plus delta bias. So now what is the delta? So for the W, it's alpha times yi minus y hat i times xi. And for the bias, it's the same um, except this part. So and alpha is the learning rate. So this is e between zero and one. And this basically decides how far we go into this direction. And then yi is the actual label and y hat i is the approximation um, with this formula. So let's explain what this part here means. Let's look at the different cases. So we have the class labels one and zero. So our binary classifier. So if both y and the approximation y hat are one, then this is correct, right? And then y minus y hat is zero. So there is no change. And the same if the um, actual label is zero and the prediction is zero. So again, we have the correct, cor correct prediction. Then we have y minus y hat is zero. So again, no change. And if our actual class is one, but the prediction is zero, then the difference is one. So this means that the um, the prediction is too low. So we need to increase the weights. And the other way around, if the label is zero and the prediction is one, then this means that the prediction is too high. So the, the weights are too high and we need to decrease this. So basically, 
the weights are pushed towards the positive or negative target class in case of a misclassification. And if the classification is correct, then we don't need to update the weights. And this is the beautiful Perceptron update rule, a very intuitive model. And this is all that we need. So let's summarize the steps. So in the training part, we want to learn the weights. So we initialize the weights. And then for each sample, we calculate the approximation with the linear model and the um, unit step activation function. Then we apply the update rule. So the delta W is alpha times Y minus Y hat times X and delta bias is alpha times Y minus Y hat. And then we learn the weights. And then we in the prediction part with the test data, we simply calculate Y hat as again, this linear model with the actuation function with the, which then gets one or zero. So this is all that we have to do. So let's jump to the code. So first let's import numpy as np and then let's create our perceptron class. This gets an init function and here we give it self and then the parameters are the learning rate and let's give it a default of 0.0. .0. And then we also give it an iter, so the number of iterations for the optimization algorithm. And let's say this is 1000 in the beginning. Then let's store this and say self lr equals the learning rate and self dot n iters equals n iters. Then we also want to store the activation function. And for this, let's say this is the unit step function. And for this, we create a global function. For example, this could also be in a utility module. So we say define unit step func, and this gets the input x. And then we can do this in one line. So we say numpy, where x is greater than zero, we return one and otherwise zero. Then we also want to get the weights. So in the beginning, these are none and also self dot bias. And this is also none in the beginning. Then we want to implement the two fit and predict functions. So define fit with self and X and Y. So the training data, and then we do define predict with self and also x. So this is now the test data. So let's start with the fit function. So in here, first we get the number of samples and the number of features from the training data. And this is x dot shape. So here we assume that x is a numpy nd array. And then the first thing to do is to init um, the parameters. So for this, let's say self dot weights equals numpy zeros with the shape n features. So this is the simplest way to do this. This is actually not the best way. A better way to do this is to randomly initialize them. Um, so I challenge you to do this on your own instead of numpy zeros, try to use a random initialization. But um, in our case, in our test example, this still works pretty well. So we can also do this. And for the bias self dot bias, this is zero. Um, this is also zero in the beginning. And now we want to make sure that the class labels are one and zero and that for not for example, one and minus one. So we say y underscore equals and then we can again use this numpy where. So we say this is numpy where y is greater than zero, then this is one and otherwise zero. And then we do the optimization or let's say learn weights. And now we say for underscore because we don't need this in range self dot n iters. And then we iterate over all the samples. So we say for index and x i in enumerate and then here x. So enumerate gives us both the index and the sample. 
And then we approximate this. So we say linear output equals numpy dot of x i and self dot weight. So w times x and then plus self dot bias. Then we say y predicted or y hat equals self dot actuation function of this linear output. And now we want to apply the perceptron update rule. And for this, let's have a look at the formula again. So the update rule is the delta w is alpha times y minus y hat times x and the delta bias is alpha times y minus y hat. So this part is the same. So we call this, let's call this update equals self dot LR times and then we say self and not self y underscore of the current index minus y predicted. So this is the update part and then we say self dot weights plus equals the update times x i for the dot weights and self dot bias simply plus equals the update part. And this is all that we need. So now we are done with the fit method. And now for the predict method, we simply again do the linear output. So we can now actually copy this. So we say linear output equals numpy dot. And here we can put in the whole x. And then we do the um, activation function. So again, y predicted equals self actuation function. And then we return y predicted. And now this is all that we need in order to implement the perceptron. So now let's test this. So I already prepared the code for the testing. You can find this on GitHub. I put the link in the description. So let's go over this very quickly. So we import matplotlib and then train test split and data sets from sklearn. Then we create a helper function for the accuracy. Then we create a test set by saying data sets make blobs with 150 samples and two features. Then we split this into training and testing. Then we create our perceptron with a learning rate and the number of iterations and call perceptron fit with the training data and then predict with the test data. And these are our predictions. So then we print the accuracy by calling accuracy with the actual labels and the predictions. And now I also want to plot the decision boundary here. So for this, um, you can use this code, which uses the weights and the bias to create a, the decision boundary. So if we run this, then we should see the plots. So yeah, these are our two blobs and this is the decision boundary. So in this case, it perfectly learned a decision boundary and now we can see the accuracy is one, 100. So everything was correct. So our code is working and this is how we implement the perceptron. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and then I hope to see you in the next one.